Welcome to the next installment of my series on how to write your novel using that most unlikely of writing implements, a round Oxford bus ticket. In this video I want to consider the worst error a would-be novelist can make and find ways to avoid it. It's a mistake so bad that if you commit it, you'd better hope there isn't an afterlife because you're going to be spending an eternity regretting it. I'll explain in detail what the mistake is and how to avoid it using some advice I received many years ago from a drunken Scotsman who happened to be sharing the same police cell as me at London's Marlebone police station. But to establish the mood first, we will take bus number three down to the high street and wander down memory lane, past memory alley and memory doorway, along memory motorway, and inserting a few gratuitous beautiful shots of Oxford to please my American viewers and hope, in the hope that they will like the video, until we arrive at this place, which is Hartford College. Evelyn War was an undergraduate here in 1922, and he later used it as a setting for his most famous Oxford novel, Brideshead Revisited. If you've read it, you will no, no doubt remember how we are introduced to the character of Sebastian Flight. He sauntered across the quad and up to the ground floor window of Charles Ryder's room, which happened to be open. He leant in and vomited. Well, this is what is known as making a memorable entrance, and really this inspires the teaching of this video. Because the greatest mistake an aspiring novelist can make is this. You pour your heart and soul into a novel, you devote your best years of your life to it, but the agent to whom you send it is so busy she re rejects it because of a few rookie errors and so your magnum opus doesn't get read. So how do we remedy that? And what does this guy do with Marlebone Police Station? Well, the story begins to me. In fact, I would say the story of my writing career begins when I was working as a junior advertising copywriter at an advertising agency in London, just off Baker Street in the 1980s. In those days, advertising creative was a synonym for someone who drinks all day. And on this particular day, I'd been attending a creative department meeting in a local pub. And I stepped out into the street for some fresh air and ran and bumped into a policeman. He smelt my breath, recoiled in horror and said, where the fuck have you just been? So I truthfully told him I'd just come from a meeting at work. And this impudence so incensed him that he arrested me and I spent the rest of the day and night in this cell in Marlebone Police Station. Well, the moral of the moral of the story is don't tell the truth to the police. But I think now the policeman had been sent by Providence because in the cell was that Scotsman who said something to me which I've never forgotten and which was very useful for me in my subsequent writing career. He said, nobody likes you. Oh, I wonder what he meant. Well, I think he'd correctly defined the essence of advertising copywriting, which basically entails trying to talk to people who don't like you and want you to go away. It's like the writing equivalent of a Jehovah's Witness. And if you write with this awareness in mind, that the reader is only seconds away from slamming the door in your face, you write completely differently. You don't waste time or beat about the bush. You take the reader captive, you grab them with the headline and you force them against their will through the copy to the final line. If you lose them, you've failed. You never forget that your, their attention is a gift that can be withdrawn at any time. As an advertising copywriter, this attitude is central to everything you write. And as an aspiring novelist trying to break into a hugely competitive field, it's damn good advice too. Your, advice, your, your, your novel might be great. But if it doesn't immediately make a splash, the world will never find out. Evelyn Waugh sent his first novel to a friend, Harold Acton, who was so sniffy about it that Waugh burned the manuscript and, according to his autobiography, swam out to sea to commit suicide. And he only aborted the attempt after he got stung by a jellyfish. Well, I imagine if that first novel had been his last, we would have never discovered the pleasures of Brideshead Revisited. Now I know some of the greatest works of literature have started in a leisurely fashion. I don't think anything happens in Robinson Crusoe until page 50. But that world has gone. You know what it's like when you watch a series on Netflix. Skip the intro, skip the recap, skip the credits, skip to the next episode, skip, skip, skip. You skip everything in an urgent fever to get where? The story. And this is what you have to do, I believe, as an aspiring novelist. Trust me, when you are famous, you can write boring shit. But when breaking in, make damn sure there's something happening right away. A sense of a story in the offing. 
Start with the title. I think the title is probably the only part of your manuscript you can guarantee the agent will read because you can put it in the subject line of your email. So rather than call your novel beige, choose something that intrigues like, oh, I don't know, the cat that puked on Wednesday. You can change it back to beige later or do what I would do. Put a paragraph in somewhere about a cat puking on Wednesday. So here's a simple trick to help create that magical feeling of there being a story in the offing. Consider this the opening to Robinson Crusoe. I was born in the year 1632 in the city of York, of a good family though not of that country, my father being a foreigner of Bremen, who settled first at Hull, he got a good... <sighs> Boring, right? This is exposition, it's backstory. It's not compelling. If you sent that off to an agent, she would probably reject it. But by making one tiny change, you can make the backstory compelling, just by adding something dramatic up front. The Sultan picked up a tray of human eyes and offered me one. If you don't eat one, he said, your eyes will be next. My hand hovered over the tray, and I thought back to the time in York when it all began. I was born in the year 1632, etc. Well, now you're hooked, right? Which is the whole point. Hook them. Which brings me back to the police station. The following morning I appeared before Marlborough Magistrates Court alongside a prostitute who had been arrested for soliciting on Edgware Road. A hooker, in fact. And when I looked at her I realised this was essentially the same trade as mine. I was a hooker of sorts. And the magistrate clearly agreed. He looked down over his half-moon spectacles at us both, at the hooker and the ad man, and saw no difference. He fined us both £25. Well, in the next video, I want to look more deeply at the notion of story and show you how you can use it to make the reader a helpless slave enthralled to your magic powers. See you then.